that the number one pick in the 2021 NBA draft goes to the Detroit Pistons. Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Basketball! Select Isaiah Stewart. The Detroit Pistons select Killian Hayes. Sadiq, that was absolutely sensational. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. From long range. Oh! Yes! 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 Detroit Basketball! What is going on, Pistons fans? Welcome back to another edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast, brought to you by Believe. Aaron Johnson here with you and joining me, gutting one out for the listeners this week is Jasper Apollonia under the weather. He is here. He is ready to perform. Give us a show as he does every week. Jasper, I you know, hope you're feeling okay. Glad you're here. We got some some pissing stuff to talk about now. Just uh, a few days away from the start of the regular season. Yeah, man, this, this is my flu game. But unlike Michael Jordan, I'm not actually hung over. <laughs> um, I'm actually sick. Yeah, I, hey, I feel sorry for any of the people that tune into our podcast just to hear the dulcet tones of me yelping excitedly. Uh, but yeah, we we actually do have quite a bit to talk about with the Pistons, um, and I'm I'm ready to get into it. You know, we we kind of missed yesterday's podcast we wanted to record, but it was okay because we got to watch that uh, Memphis preseason game, which while um, it didn't exactly go the way you would have wanted to as a Pistons fan. Uh, definitely helped, you know, pound home some of the things we've been talking about on this podcast the last few weeks and definitely gave you a, a better idea of where this team is going into the regular season. Yeah, it, it certainly did. It was the conclusion of uh, what I deemed a very disappointing preseason for Detroit. Uh, we're going to get into the preseason performance and stuff that, that has come with it and more. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about our sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online makes this show possible every week uh, and is the number one source for all your, your betting needs. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, players' news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, golf, and soon basketball. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. That's a hell of a promo. 100% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, the promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V. Guys, definitely check it out. That's the best promo we've had uh, for Bet Online in a hot minute. So make sure to check them out. I'll be using them throughout the NBA season, no doubt about it. Let's talk about basketball, though. Let's talk about the Pistons and their preseason. Detroit goes 0-4 in the preseason with losses to the Pelicans. Uh, to the Grizzlies, to the Thunder, and I'm forgetting the other team. The Knicks. The Knicks, First one. right, that's where they started. So 0-4 in preseason. Uh, like I said just a, a minute ago, I would describe the preseason as very disappointing. Jasper, what would you describe Detroit's preseason as? Uh, a sign of things to come. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, it it kind of pounded home a lot of the things that we talked about, actually, after the first preseason game. Just three more of these games really made me feel even more confident. You know, the, the title of our last podcast was overreacting to the first preseason game. And now that I look at it, I, I don't think there was much of an overreaction. Uh, the Pistons, you know, they are a very flawed team right now, uh, especially on the defensive ends of things. They're still figuring things out offensively. I do think that, you know, side of the floor is going to come a along a little bit more quickly. Like, sorry. Sorry to any of the pe people that are calling Cade Cunningham a bust. Um, I don't think he's averaging 10 points per game uh, in the regular season. That's just not something that you should look forward to. But look, there's some good things too, right? Like Isaiah Stewart shooting threes at a high volume and at high efficiency that has happened this preseason. 
shooting four and a half per game, 30, 39% of his threes he's hit. Yeah, they're all wide open, but still, if he keeps hitting them at a 40% clip, they're not going to be wide open for long. Uh, I think Jaden Ivey's looked really good. Uh, I think Killian Hayes is one of those guys that is one of the few players on the roster, to be completely honest, that I'm like, oh, okay, I can see where the growth has come in since last season. Uh, I can see where you are going into this season. And I like that. Uh, He's been fairly efficient. He's been fairly aggressive, led the team in assists, uh, hasn't turned it over too much. So I think that's been good. Um, But, you know, they haven't come out unscathed either. Marvin Bagley III suffered what was really, honestly, lucky to only be a minor knee injury. I I thought his ACL was gone um, when I I saw him go down like that. And, yeah, he's going to be out for, I believe it's, what, eight weeks? Uh, But, you know, considering the alternative, uh, that's the best case scenario. Um, I mean, honestly, Aaron, you're you're completely correct when you say, yeah, it's disappointing because these preseason wins don't matter when it's all said and done. But the way that the Pistons were just, especially on the defensive end, just not fighting, not fighting to the way that you'd like to see them fight. Yeah, they put in the effort, but every time – I think last night was a great example of it. Every time they get closer to Memphis, all of a sudden, John ja Morant goes on an 11-0 run by himself, you know? And you could even see at points, I, I, I tweeted about it last night, you know, Cade Cunningham played a solid defensive possession and the Pistons still gave up an easy dunk right under the basket. And he was mad right afterwards. He literally, you could hear him clapping, going, come on, White, where you at, White? And I couldn't blame him whatsoever for that. I, I think the defensive effort especially in this preseason has just really been disappointing so far. And I I have a lot of worries, uh, especially with this early open uh, opening to the schedule for Detroit. People have been talking about their first 10 games. We've said it beforehand. It does not get easier from there. They go on a West coast trip right after. So I think Aaron, the way you're looking at it right now, at least if you're just building, basing it off a preseason, Uh, This is a team that's that's looking like they might be in trouble to start the season. Yeah, I have a lot of issues with the Pistons in the preseason. And to preface that, I I, want to make it clear, like, it does not matter that they were missing Alec Burks, Nerlens Noel, like these guys that, yeah, are probably rotation players for them. The Pistons had their their top guys, though. Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, Jaden Ivey, Isaiah Stewart. Uh, they had Bogdanovich for two of the games. Like, they had their guys out there. And they looked like they were in January form in terms of effort. It was non-existent in any of the preseason games. They put up no fight on either side of the floor in any of the games. This is the beginning of the year, right? This is the beginning of a new season this is where a lot of teams are like hey let's let's see what we can do let's maybe we won't be great maybe we're not expected to be great but like let's go out there give it our all and see how close we can get and the pistons look like they're in january of last year as a 20 win team just going through the motions again and that is concerning to me it is preseason but at the same time Effort matters. Effort matters in preseason. This isn't a team that has proven they belong. This is a team of 23-year-olds that have to learn how to play, how to win, and they should be a team that is at least playing with effort, even if they still are coming up short in terms of the wins and loss column. Like, they could have gone 0-4 in preseason, but fought like like hell in every game, and it would have been fine. But they've gotten dismantled each and every game defensively the the switch everything defensive game plan has been a wreck it's not working and that is discouraging because some of the best defenses in the league today are predicated on being able to switch everything and and trusting your guys to defend one to five essentially and the pistons just put up no fight on that side of the court They're already at a disadvantage in most lineups because they're not going to be super big. They're not going to be super athletic if they're out there with 
Bogdanovich and Stewart in the front court, um, you know, or or some similar combination where Stewart's the five, and you know, if it's Isaiah Livers or someone else like that, Kevin Knox, like, yeah, they're gonna be at a disadvantage size wise, which means they're gonna have to tune it up in terms of effort. They're gonna have to be a team that scraps and fights a little bit more. And again, like we've seen them under Dwayne Casey be that team. We've seen them be a team that, hey, look, they're not very good. They don't have the most skilled players. They don't have the best scorers in the league, but it's a team that fights and they're going to play close every night. That was a yeah, couple. But, but ago. Aaron, they got stunted on by David Roddy and Kennedy Chandler last night. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that, but and that's not okay. Like that that's not okay. You can say, hey, look, it's preseason all you want, but at the end of the day, there also has to be a little bit of pride. There has to be a little bit of, hey, like, what are we doing? What are we trying to do? How are we gonna get there? It certainly doesn't start with getting beat up by rookie second round rookie draft picks and and G League guys and and, and things of that nature in, in summer league. Like this is not we saw it in the OKC game. We saw it in uh, the Grizzlies game where they had their second, third stringers out on the court. Some of these guys that might not make the roster and the Pistons core guys were out there and they were still getting beat up on. That's just not okay. Whatever preseason, say it's preseason all you want. That'll never be okay with me, especially for a team that has proven absolutely nothing and has spent all off season talking about, Oh, Hey, we know, you know, the odds are against us, but, we're doing this every day because we want to win. We're in here together every day. We've been here working all off season because we're that hungry to win. We want to be like the great Pistons teams that have come before us. Marin Fader of the ringer put out a great article about the Detroit Pistons uh, earlier this week with stuff from Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivy, Troy Weaver, even Tom Gores and the owner. And it's like, this is a team that talks has done all this talking about how we're going to compete. We're going to be better. We're going to find ways to win. We're working hard, but then they go out and they perform like they did in preseason. And it was just so utterly discouraging for me. Um, I'm not saying the Pistons have to be a playoff team this year, but they've got to play with effort. They got to play with pride. And that sounds so cliche, but it's just the the, the honest truth. They didn't do that in preseason. Uh, so that's why I feel incredibly discouraged heading into the regular season. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're a hundred percent right, Aaron. Um, and you know, again, I I don't want to, I don't want to overreact to preseason at the same time. Even though I do agree with everything you're saying there, like at the same time, I can't go into the regular season looking at what Cade Cunningham did and say, well, oh, this is what it's going to be like going into the. Re-. I mean, this is a guy that's going to he's going to take control of the offense, and you're going to see him take a bigger role there. Uh, there's no way they can shoot as poorly as they did during the preseason. He said, setting himself up for them to shoot just as poorly as they did during the preseason. Um, but like there was, there's good things too, right? Like Sadiq Bay, I think obviously his efficiency was not where you want it to be. And that's worrying going into year three, but there were some good things going on with his development. I saw him getting into the paint. I saw him figuring out ways to, to create little one twos to get himself a little bit of space going to the basket um, I saw him overpowering guys going to the rim. And that's something that we have been begging for, for the last two seasons. He's a big, strong guy and he has not been good near the rim. He hasn't been good inside the arc period. 45% after two years from two point range for a player that's as big and strong and skilled as Sadiq Bay is not acceptable. So seeing him being able to finish near the rim, I thought that was a good sign. Um, same with Isaiah Stewart being able to hit threes. Same with Killian Hayes going out there and looking comfortable. Uh, but you're 100% correct when you say, yeah, it's not an acceptable showing. You brought up that article. You know, you have you have the, the Pistons talking about how good they get along together, how much they like each other, how, how they have all this camaraderie. But you see it out on the court, and these look like a bunch of guys that have never played together in their lives. I mean, it's totally discombobulated. Um and of course, some of that is going to come down to who's on the floor. Look, Jalen Duran played really big minutes last night. That guy's not ready to play big minutes. I love a lot of the things he does, especially with the rebounding and the energy, but he's just simply not ready. Um, 
And, and that's something that we have to account for at the same time. Cade Cunningham willingly taking a lesser role in the offense in order to get his guys going. Did it work? Uh, no. But it's not something I anticipate is going to continue going on into the regular season. Um, look, honestly, Aaron, I mean, Kevin Knox looked good last night. I, I like seeing him finally get a little bit of running time and, and, and hit some shots. Like, that's all you can ask of a player like Kevin Knox. Come in, do what you're paid for. And he did that last night. Um, you know, I think Isaiah Livers is going to get a lot more run during the regular season as well. And a big part of that is our second topic, which is Marvin Bagley the uh, third going down with that what looked to be a really brutal knee injury. Uh, luckily, he's not going to be out as long as the whole season. He will be back, but it does throw a little bit of a wrench into this big man rotation, does it not? It does. Marvin Bagley went down with what the Pistons cited, an injury that will keep him out for uh, at least the next three to four weeks. He suffered a bone bruise and sprained medial collateral ligament in his right knee, which just sounds really, really painful. Uh, but he's set to, to miss at least the next three to four weeks. And that being said, you just said, you know, you're not comfortable giving Jalen Duren big minutes yet. That kind of sets it up to where Jalen Duren is going to play big minutes to start the year. At least you'd imagine, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with Nerlens Noel. We haven't seen him in the preseason. It sounds like everything that they've been doing with him is precautionary. I believe he practiced lightly uh, earlier this week, so I'm not sure if that sets him up to be ready by the home opener or by the season opener on Wednesday. Uh, but if it's not, I think that certainly guarantees Jalen Duren a spot in the rotation because that would leave Isaiah Stewart really as your lone center uh, if outside of Duren. And look, the Pistons are appear to be such a bad rebounding team that they might just have to play Duren because that is something that he obviously dominates at, was double-digit rebounder in every game he played in in preseason. I believe he ended up finishing leading the league uh, in, in rebounding in preseason. The way he attacks the glass is going to be important for this team. It's important for him to actually be uh, serviceable for minutes on the court, and the Bagley injury sets up him getting an opportunity sooner rather than later. I am okay with that because – I think, you know, you drafted Jalen Duren for a reason. I'm not of the mindset he needs to go down in the G League and spend a bunch of time playing there. And I certainly don't just want him sitting on the 15th seat uh, of the bench and just wasting away. I want to see him get on the court. This team doesn't look like they're going to be very good anyways. Let's see what Jalen Duren has to bring to the table. And once Bagley can play, once Noel can play, you can reevaluate from there and say, look, Jalen's been good enough. He's going to stay in the rotation or, you know, we've survived, but Nerlens is a proven veteran. Bagley, we, we've invested in. Jalen's going to play a, a lesser role. He's going to go down to the G League. You can take it from there. But right now, this is setting up for him to play some big minutes with Bagley out. Uh, Durant's going to have to prove in those minutes that he can rebound and defend at an NBA level. There's going to be opportunities for him in this offense to get some looks down low. This team likes giving him the ball. Kate Cunningham was visibly forcing the ball to him at points uh, in the preseason. They want to give him opportunity. It's on him now to capitalize on it. He's got to take the preseason uh, experience and quickly try to turn it around and learn from it and, and build upon it to make it successful uh, in the regular season. I'm of the mindset that He's going to get minutes. We'll have to see what's going on with Nerlens Noel. Everything's kind of been quiet on him and Alec Burks uh, since you know, we heard that they were going to miss some time to start a training camp. Haven't really gotten much of an update on either of them. I'm curious where both of them are at. Uh, it was good to see Kevin Knox out there. There's Bogdanovich, who's also going to get minutes in the front court. Isaiah Livers is going to get minutes in the front court. So the Bagley injury isn't great, but I'm not – I'm not super worried about it because the Pistons have different guys that they can plug and play there that do different things well. And an opportunity to get Jalen Duren on the floor without having to force someone out of the rotation that's going to, you know, potentially cause a locker room issue 
or a player front office, player coaching staff issue is fine by me because I want to see what this kid can do. You invested in him to trade up for him. Let's see what he can do for your team. I think it also opens up opportunities for other guys other than just Jalen Duran too, especially and it does seem like Alec Burks is probably going to miss a little bit of time to open the regular season. I don't know about Nerland's Noel. I hope he's back. Um, <clears throat> but I do think that this opens up things for other players like Isaiah Livers. I think you're going to see Isaiah Livers uh, get a little bit more time down at the four because of this. And I think that's a great thing for him. I think it also opens up the possibility for Hamadou Diallo to get a little bit of early season run. Uh, he didn't play in any of these preseason games, but I, I think that if you can get Hamadou Diallo uh, a little bit of playing time at the three, see where he's at, or possibly even at the four, you know, you have him and Isaiah Livers. I, I think it's kind of going to be like a Sadiq Bay. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich thing where it's like eh, three four what does it really matter you're our wings basically uh, that's the way the NBA is played more now anyway there's not really traditional fours in, in the way that they used to be uh, so I think getting Isaiah Livers a little bit more time I, I and seeing what he can do at the four position I think getting Hamadou Diallo a little bit of playing time you know obviously you want to have Marvin Bagley out there you just paid him 13 million dollars a year over the next three years but it doesn't have to be a total negative. And I think that it gives you the opportunity to play around with lineups, see what players who might not have gotten a lot of playing time to begin the regular season, what they can bring to your team while, while Bagley is out. So uh, while at the same time, you know, it's difficult, I think it's also an opportunity and it's not like losing Marvin Bagley. is going to be the difference between you, you know, starting off one in nine versus you know, eight and two like you're gonna lose a lot of games this season like we already know that I, I still have the Pistons over when it's all said and done but like they're not going to be a good team this year and and we we should accept that by now uh so so just being able to put other players into positions where they're able to show what they can do I think is ultimately a positive for this team um you know we'll see how it works out in the long run though because Bagley will be back. Noel will be back and Alec Burks will be back. And those are all players that I think not only deserve playing time, but are going to need playing time as well. I agree. I agree. I think there's a lot of players that are, that have the opportunity to get some minutes. And, you know, I think it's good that Detroit's going to get some guys that do different things out there as well. Like Duran, it's obviously different than Duran, or excuse me, Duran is obviously different than Bogdanovich or Livers. Um, and it, it allows Detroit to try out some different big man combos. I don't know how much that'll affect their plan to play Isaiah Stewart at the four. Uh, I think it makes it a little bit easier because if, if Noel is able to play sooner rather than later and you're comfortable giving minutes to Duran, which it does sound like they're going to play him, then you can try out Stewart at the four. That's what they want to do, at least. You know, I don't know if it will work out, but at least they're going to try it. And I don't know. Part of me feels like this team, like they, they've already got excuses built in to, to this being a losing season, which like I don't expect them to win a ton. But at the same time, just feels like we're going into the season and, and we're already talking ourselves of like, uh, this team's going to win 20 games and that's okay, which it doesn't feel right. The start of the year, start of a new season is supposed to feel like a time of, of hope of, of rejuvenation in a sense where it's like, Hey, things can go this team's way. If this, this, and this hit right. And it's like, we're already skipping that with the Pistons because everything appears at least after the preseason that it's not, it's no, nothing is okay right now, but I guess it's an overreaction to preseason. That's what we were told in the comments after uh, last week's podcast, after the first game <laughs> of the preseason. We really don't know what we're talking about, uh, according to some people. So I guess we mm. should move on from that. Uh, one thing I did well, want to You know what? <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. What were you going to say, Eric? Please. I, I was going to – wanted to touch on Kate Cunningham because – Yeah. There's been some discussion about him from the preseason. You know, he has not had great performances – the numbers offensively, the shooting numbers, not good. 
He's a bust. Not cut good. him. Hey, people, people are talking. But Kate Cunningham was on the low post, and uh, the, that's Zach Lowe's podcast uh, through ESPN. And he was on it earlier this week, you know, and he talked a lot about, look, like, we've put a lot of work in. Like, we're going to go out there and, and try to win. Like, you know, we don't want to be like last year. We want to be in a better spot. And a lot of people are worried about Kate Cunningham after the preseason. Personally, I am not. Um, there's some speculation that Kate is was like, I want to. I don't want to say like not trying, but quote unquote like not giving it his all in preseason. I don't want to read too much into that. I just wanted to come out and say like people are freaking out over Kate Cunningham, who just put up a rookie season that was like comparable to Michael Jordan, and we're freaking out over four preseason games specifically over Kate Cunningham. I'd much rather spend the mind space worrying about how the team looked defensively. And how discombobulated the team looked as a whole offensively than just focusing on the player who had an incredible rookie year and has a lot of upside going for him. I'm not going to worry about some poor preseason performances where it visibly looked like he was just trying to get some other guys involved. He was trying to set up the rookies a lot. I am not worried about some poor shooting from Cade Cunningham. The turnovers... Maybe those were a problem in his rookie year. Uh, it looks like turnovers are going to be a problem for this team in general, but specifically nothing in the preseason from Kate Cunningham has dissuaded me from my belief in how good he is going to be. I think people are, if anyone's overreacting, I think it's the people that are losing their minds over Kate Cunningham's preseason performance. Well, yeah, four game shooting splits in preseason are <laughs> So high variance, and it's clear that he's not going out there to hunt his own shot because why would he? He's Cade Cunningham. He doesn't need to prove himself in preseason. He's Cade Cunningham. Um, That's the type of thing that you don't read into. That's an overreaction. When you see a team that defensively is unable to communicate with each other and gives bad effort, uh, that's not a variance thing. That is indicative of a larger team problem. That's a bunch of pieces moving together that don't work right now. So that's not like it's one of those things where it's like very, very confusing to me to see people defend certain things and criticize other things when, again, like Kate Cunningham's four game sample size of shooting is not indicative of anything. Um, The team's defense is and we need to be able to parse those two things. But Aaron, I want to bring it back to what you were saying about you know, Zach Lowe. Um, I I really liked the interview with Cade. It was the perfect Cade interview where you listen to it and he talks for like 25 minutes and basically says nothing. But at the end of the conversation, you're like, I get it. I get why this guy was drafted number one overall. I get why he's the franchise player. He just, he knows, he's like a politician is really what it is. And he even kind of said it himself on the podcast. You know, he doesn't believe in the type of leadership, like the Pat Bev kind of leadership. You know what I mean? Where it's I'm clapping my hands and I'm talking all this and I'm the leader and you're going to listen to me. It's like, a no, I'm going to meet you on your level. Uh, I'm going to do the right things day in, day out. I'm going to show you what it means to be a leader. And when I, it's time to talk, I'll talk. When it's time to act, I'll act. Uh, I thought that was a great thing. I was cracking up actually even more so, though, listening afterwards when Zach Lowe had uh, Jamal Jamal Curtis, I believe it is, um, on the podcast to talk about the Pistons. And it sounded like our first preseason podcast. Like, they were literally talking about the exact same things in terms of the defensive issues, how they're worried about the rotation playing out. Uh, should Bogdanovich come off the bench? Should he start? It's kind of a waste to have him come off the bench. Hell, they even dropped a John Huster and Gigi Tatome reference. I was in my room. I was literally laughing out loud. I was like, is Zach Lowe listening to the podcast? Uh, I know we only get about, you know, 2,000 listeners a week. He must be one of them. Because I don't think anybody but you and me have thought about Gigi Tatome over the last 10 years, Aaron. <laughs> well, maybe we're not crazy. Yeah. I maybe mean- we're not. 
the GG to Tommy reference, like I perked up. Like I was just sitting there, like doing some work, and then I heard Zach bring up GG to Tommy, uh, and and the John Custer thing too, which is one of my favorite stories of all time. Zach, if you are listening, have me on the podcast. I have even more dirt about that John Custer story that I don't think even you know. So don't <laughs> don't don't you worry about that. If he talks about Tom Gorris having sex with his uh, brother's wife, then I swear to God, I'm I'm popping. I'm popping big time. Oh my God, Jet! Even even in his flu game, Jasper Jasper's here. Like the 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 excitement comes out of Jasper for for these story time <laughs> type things. That's what he loves the most. You can you can tell okay. every time something like kind of like crazy like random pops up like that activates like a different person in Jasper and it just it just comes alive. It's but, the nerd in me. It's the it's the hardcore nerd in me. I can't get enough. <laughs> oh, it was it was a good podcast. It was a good podcast. Kate definitely, like you said, like speaks like a politician. He's very well coached in in how to to speak, what to say, what not to say. Um, but you're still able to pick up on on some stuff here and there. And I thought that was a good interview. Zach Lowe, you know, he is the upper echelon of NBA blogging media in general. So he he did a good job. Speaking of blogging, palaceofpistons.com is going to have some content coming out uh, next week with some previews for the for the different positions. Jasper, you've got you've got some stuff coming on that, don't you? I do. I, I wrote about the guards and, you know, I, I hope to have even more stuff coming out this year. I, I didn't write as much as I wanted to last year, but this seems like kind of a great opportunity because there are so many new players, different opportunities moving parts um i i can't wait to really get into this season aaron even if we are sounding like we're kind of negative about it i I am super super excited to see what happens because Jaden ivy is so exciting uh and and seeing him and Cade come together i can't i cannot wait i really cannot wait uh but yeah i talked about the guards and what we should expect from them uh this year it took everything in my power not to write another two three thousand words but i did uh you're welcome for the word count mike and um yeah i'm very much excited to to see what people think about what i said we're gonna have two other articles coming out as well on the season preview both with the wings and the bigs um should be really exciting i i I can't wait aaron i really can't wait i love basketball (laughs) it's it's great that that the regular season is is finally here and before we wrap up we only have a few minutes left uh just quickly the pistons open up the season with orlando uh then they give guy have new york indiana and washington on a three-game road trip those first four games i know we talk about their their start of the season being pretty difficult because they then go on to play Atlanta and Milwaukee a couple times a piece with Golden State and Cleveland mixed in there as well. But I think those first four games of the regular season, you know, you're playing teams that uh, you're probably in the same echelon of where don't really know how good they're going to be, but they all could potentially be scrappy except for maybe Indiana, unless you're high on Indiana. But I think Who that's is? a good way for Detroit to start the year. I want to see something in those four games because it gets very difficult for them after that. I think those first four games are are, are are teams that you can compete with, and I think this team needs to show that they can compete with. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very bumpy start for them if they kind of squander those first four games and then go on to play all those playoff. And teams that probably want to contend at a higher level this year if you're Atlanta and Cleveland – mixed in with true contenders in Golden State and Milwaukee, it could be a very bumpy first 10 games if they get off to a slow start. I I, I wow. think we need to see Detroit play well to, to begin the season. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that those first four games are their only opportunity to be 500 or better on the season. Think about that. Like, there's a really good chance that after there's those, they could start off two and two, three and one, and there's a good chance after that they never even approach 500 for the rest of the season. So, you know, that's kind of depressing to think about, but it's certainly in play and they need to get off to a good start. If they're going to have any momentum, any momentum going into the the latter half of those first 10 games, and especially going into that West coast trip uh, that, that happens early on in the season as well. So they're going to have a lot of, 
they're going to have a lot of, of difficulty, I think, opening up the season. I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of plays out like it has the last two years. You know, they start off really pretty rough. Um, things get a little bit better as the season goes on. And then, you know, towards the last couple months of the season, as more teams tank, as more teams, you know, kind of rest their starters going into the playoffs, that's when you see them, you know, kind of start racking up a, a few more wins there. I think that's probably what I'm expecting going into the season, Aaron. Um, preseason certainly didn't help my expectations. I'll say that much. Yeah, like, like we talked about this whole podcast, preseason was just incredibly disappointing. Orlando, the first test, and there's some excitement around that game. I'm excited for it. I th- I'm really, really a fan of what Orlando's doing. Uh, Dude, I'm just, they're, they I'm have a good rotation. Ball. It's incredible. Like the, the, the They go 10 I, deep. Yeah. Yeah. The size, the athleticism, like it's, it's an intriguing, intriguing group over there. Pistons start with them on October 19th on Wednesday at seven. We have made it folks. This was the final podcast before the regular season begins and we've made it. I'm so excited to get the year underway. We'll have content on palace of Pistons.com coming next week. Prior to the start of the season, we're very, very excited to bring it to you. Uh, that does it for me, Jasper. Anything else you want to add before we, we take this one home? No, I have hope hope to have Mike back. Uh, hope to have me back to full strength next week. Um, if I do come on sick next week, it's because I'm hungover, not because I'm sick, just to be clear. Uh, <laughs> no, that's pretty much it for me. Um, you know, in, enjoy these last couple days before the regular season. I can't wait for it. Um, it's coming up fast, so let's – What are we waiting for? Let's just start the games now. Seriously, let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, well, that's going to do it for us on this week's edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast brought to you by Believe. Thanks to Bet Online uh, for their partnership on today's episode. For Marin Johnson and Jasper Apollonia, signing off, and we will see you guys next week on the Palace of Pistons podcast.